Hey everybody, welcome to Root. I am Disturbing Puppet. Uh, so this is another one of those games that is a board game that they made a digital version of. And uh, it's kind of nice to play. I don't have a chance to play board games and stuff anymore, so it's uh, kind of a nice thing to do to kind of jump in and play these. So kind of things like Armello and this. Um, I've having quite a bit of fun with this. Root is pretty complicated because there are four factions and all four of them work totally differently. So instead of trying to explain everything, I'm going to basically pick a faction that I know the best, uh, play it, and kind of explain how they work. And I'm probably going to go through all of them. It sort of depends on how things go. Um, so I am still pretty new at this. I've played probably a dozen or so games with the different factions, and I still am not totally grasping some of the concepts, but uh, just kind of the way it goes. Anyway, I'm playing with all different factions. I'm not going to play a challenge. I'm just going to go solo. Uh, there is a new map in the winter map, and I do want to try that out, but the layout's going to be different. So for this first one, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to start with the one that I know the best, which is the Vagabond. So there are four different factions. So you have Vagabond, Marquita de Cat, Eerie Dynasties, and the Woodland Alliance. So very, very shortly, Vagabond is a one-person faction. You travel around, complete quests, and uh, there's a couple other ways that you can gain experience points. Helping other factions gives you experience points. You can ally with a faction, which gives even more if you benefit them. You can eventually get to the point where you can even command that faction's soldiers if you ally with them super closely. Um, other ways that all the factions can gain experience points is by destroying enemy buildings. Marquis de Cat plays the most like a basic faction um, in most games where you've got three actions per turn, you get experience points or you get victory points for building stuff, but also destroying enemy stuff. Eerie Dynasties works kind of the same way, but they have a weird way to get extra victory points. And they have kind of a strange mechanic where they have to do certain actions every turn or they end up losing victory points and have kind of a turnover in leadership, which causes some changes to their gameplay. And then Wooden Alliance is sort of like the insurrectionist, uh, it's like fox and mouse alliance that sort of take over uh, from the other factions. So like the regular Woodland creatures are t tired of being pushed around, so they rise up in rebellion. And they are the best fighters, so they get a big benefit when uh, you're fighting over all the other factions. So they're much harder to defeat, but they have a bit limited in their army and stuff, how big it can get. And typically they're only going to have actual control of a few different spaces on the board. So we're going to go with this and see how it goes. And usually play on medium, and I think I win about roughly about half the time, so I'm probably not going to win all of these. Um, I might be lucky to win one, we'll kind of see how it goes. Okay, so we have cards, we have different factions, all kinds of crazy stuff's going to go on. Orkita Cat starts with units all over the place. That's Eerie Dynasty. Alright, which one do I want to be? So in this faction there's multiple choices. Uh, so there's actually a lot of re replayability. I really like the Ranger, but I typically win more often with the Tinker. The difference is the hammer here lets the tinkerer actually make cards. If you don't have a hammer, as the vagabond, you can't actually play any of your cards. I can use them to give to other factions to get some victory points, but I can't actually make them myself. The ranger's more combat focused, so he can move, that's supposed to be a boot. Um, all of them have the uh, torch, which lets them do some exploring on some ruins. This lets you kill an enemy unit for free without them hitting you back. This lets you actually fight in combat. Um, the Thief has kind of similar things, but he's got some coffee to start with, which means that he gets more items he can use every turn, essentially. When you use an item, it's sort of tapped, and then you have to, at the beginning of your turn, drink some coffee, wake up, uh, get everything ready, and that's sort of the process of getting that stuff untapped. Uh, the Tinker starts with a bag, which means he can just carry more crap. And eventually you do want more of those anyway. Um, they also have abilities, so the Ranger can, if he doesn't do anything with the Torch, repair three items and immediately end that part of the turn. So if you do get in a fight with these guys, they can't be killed, but their items can be damaged, so they can't use them. So repairing them just gets them back so you can actually use them. Thief can steal a random card from a player in the same clearing as you. And the Tinkerer can take a card from the discard pile matching the clearing. So there's kind of different icons on the different clearings. So this you can pick very specifically out of the discard pile, the one card you want. Whereas this is just a random card from a player. Um, I'm going to go with the Tinkerer. I do like the Tinkerer. 
I think I have the best luck with the Tinker. So where do I want to start? So I have a couple cards here. Nothing too crazy. So for the Vagabonds, um, you can see each field here has an icon on it. So this kind of governs what resources you get depending on your faction or what cards you can play in those fields. So these are kind of separate. And then the pathways are a little bit weird, but you can kind of figure it out. So like you can't actually go between these two, but you can go in the walkway. You have to go around. So for the Vagabond, what you want to look at too is the ruins. So if you use your torch at a ruin, you get a free item and you also get a victory point. And I think there's four. Yeah, there are always these four spots. So I'm assuming on the winter map, they'll be different. So I want to probably start somewhere where I can just grab all of those. There's something I like to do early on is grabbing those and then maybe helping out some of the other factions to get some victory points, maybe playing some cards, kind of see how it goes. So I have to start in the woods. I think I'm going to start, maybe we'll start here. We'll kind of hit this area and then go down and then over if I can. But it gives me options. I can kind of get into any field adjacent. I get a free movement at the start of my turn. Um, I'm going to just head on into here. So, I can do stuff now. So in this field there's a ruin, which I can explore. So this kind of shows me I can build a card. So there's a bunny icon here. And even though this is a fox card, the cost is underneath it. So bunny. If I play that, I get an extra boot and I get a victory point. So that's the victory point icon. With boots, I can move more on my turn. So it costs one boot to move between spaces. But I also get a free move at the start of my turn. So I may not necessarily want to do that. For my cards, I've also got an ambush, which I don't have to play anything or pay anything to use this. If I get attacked in any clearing, I can ambush, which means I'll automatically kill two of the enemies that come after me. Uh, this uh, doesn't really do me much, the tax collector, so tax collector. This is something I probably would give away to one of the other factions. So helping other factions also gives me victory points, but there's weird rules related to that too, so we'll kind of get into it. All right, so first things first. Let's explore. Okay, got a boot already. So I get a 50 point for checking out the ruin. I get a boot. Eh, boot's okay, not too fantastic. Right, so what else do I want to do? So here I could build the travel gear. I don't really want another boot, honestly, because it takes up space. So these are my spaces here. The more bags I have, the more spaces are gonna appear. It's gonna keep expanding. Here's my coffee, I start with three, so three things that are tapped can basically get refreshed. And if I get some more, I can do more. Card draw, the more money I have, the more cards I draw every turn. And right now, I can't fight at all, I have no swords. So I am totally open to being attacked at any time by anybody who wants to beat me up. But, I think, just because it does give me a victory point, I might do that. We also have quests, so quests let me do stuff. So this is the kind of clearing you need to be in to do the quest. These are the things you need. So two swords, this is a torch and a coffee pot, torch and a hammer. The only things of these that I have are a torch and a hammer, but I use my torch already this turn, so I can't use it to complete this quest. But next turn I could. So I might want to go to a fox clearing next turn. So right here, I want to go there anyway, so it's not a bad deal. All right, I'm going to go ahead and craft the card just for the victory point. And it gives me an extra boot I don't really need, but I could kind of use that for other things. Because I want more victory points, not necessarily because I like them, I'm going to help out the Marquis. Oh, I don't want to do that, do I? The only thing I can give him is the ambush. No, I don't want to do that. I want to give you my crappy card. So... I'll go ahead and move. We'll head on down here. And I'll give you my tax collector card. I have to exhaust something to do that. One of my boots, I don't really care. Okay, so I gave him one card. I get a victory point. He likes me a little bit. We're at level one. In order to get to level two, I have to give him two cards. And that gives me two victory points. To get to level three, which is an actual alliance, I need to give him three cards in one turn. That gets me three victory points and might irritate the other factions. 
So I could get everybody to level two. Everybody kind of likes me and get so two victory points plus two victory points plus two victory points plus me doing quests and things for victory points plus making cards for victory points gets me to win, hopefully. Um, so the way to win is first a faction to 30 victory points, wins, and you're done. Right, so that's basically all I could do. I could move around some more. I don't really need to. I want to stay here because I want to check out the ruin next turn. Um, I have a, my special ability, but I need my torch to do that. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to pass. That's it. So I draw one card. Now the Woodland Alliance, they're going to put agitators in different fields. If they get enough support, they can overthrow that field, kill everybody in it, and put a little fort in where they can start recruiting soldiers. Meanwhile, the Marquita Cat, he's going to build stuff. He gets lots of victory points for building buildings. The Eerie are mostly going to try to spread and kill stuff. So he's building lots of stuff. All right, Eerie. They're building cards they can use in combat. They're building up a giant army. They're going to move around. So they're going to build more stuff, get some more victory points. Eventually, they're going to be a problem. So here, daytime comes. I can only refresh three things. So these are the most important. And then something else doesn't matter. All right, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay here because I want to grab this. So I'll skip that. I did get this, so I could make myself a bag if I go to a mouse field. And there is one there, so we could grab this, go over here, and then make that. That's probably what we'll do. Um, I do have the quest I could do as well, so I could ignore this, because I need these for the quest. But it's only two cards or one victory point. And I get a victory point here anyway, so I'm just going to check and see what I get randomly. Okay, get a bag anyway. Cool. Carry more stuff. See, I can only have three bags. Beyond that, doesn't really do me any good. So since I did that, I still have that quest there. I'll get a new quest when I actually use one. And the, the further you go, there are quests that will give you two or even three victory points. I'm going to go ahead and move over here. And I'm going to go ahead and make... Another bag myself, which is why I like this character, because you can make the cards. So now I'm maxed out on bags. I've got all kinds of space for extra stuff, and I'm giving myself some extra victory points. So they've got two, five, one, I'm at five. So I'm doing okay at this point. Um, I could give him one thing, but it doesn't actually give me any benefit for victory points, so I'm not going to. Okay, I'm going to have a revolt. Okay, they are taking over that space. They kill everything there, they build a fort, now they can start making their fox soldiers. Who are super dangerous. I often kind of ally with them, because they're sort of a third faction, um, if I'm playing the Vagabond. But it depends on the situation. Sometimes they've mercilessly come after me and try to kill me constantly, I don't know why. I'm just trying to be friends with everyone and get victory points by just helping everybody out. So very quickly, a card came up there called Dominance. So there are alternative ways to win other than 30 victory points, and you kind of get those randomly. So they could be things like control all three mouse fields, uh, control two fields from opposite ends of the map, those kind of things. But you can only have one in play, and you don't gain more victory points when you actually start going for that option. Oh, where am I? I'm here... So I could go here, give him my tax collector card, which will give me a victory point, and solve that. I could stay here and check out what's inside the ruin. Either option seems pretty decent. Um, I could give him something here anyway, so either way I could get two victory points. But I'd kind of like to see what I can get for free out of these, so maybe I'll do those first. And there's a fox one here anyway that I could go to for those fox quests. It doesn't have to be that specific. Any fox clearing, any fox clearing, any mouse clearing. Um, yeah, I'll just stay here, I think. So let's check this ruin. Alright, 
So now, some cards cost more than one to make. So like this actually costs three, and it's three different things. I will never be able to make that as the Vagabond. Um, because I can only be in one field at a time. So with two hammers, I can make a card that costs two mouse. If I'm here, two fox. If I'm here, two rabbit. I can't mix and match because I don't control more than one place. I'm only in one place at one time. What I will do, though... Hey, Mr. Airy Dynasty. Oh, I don't want to actually give you my ambush card. I'd like to hold on to that. Can I go anywhere? Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll go over here and give it to you. We'll set that up. I'd really like to get this. I could go here, but there's no Airy Dynasty for me to give it to. I could do a couple movement, go down here, give it to him, and then on my next turn for free, I can move up there. Well, actually, I can't, because that's not a fox. I've got to have... Eerie Dynasty in a fox tile, and there really is only one. Alright. Let's go over here. I'll go, hey, Mr. Bird People. I'm also your friend. I have a tax collector. Um, let's... I'm not going to use anything for making cards right now, so I'm going to do that. I want to move one. So now he likes me a little bit. It doesn't actually make a difference for the uh, AI, I don't think. But I can see playing with actual people. You might be like, hey, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Hey, you don't need to kill me. Leave me alone. It's fine. Um, so if I move here, then I can get a free move on my next turn there. That's kind of my plan, although it does burn a lot of my boots right now. So I'll just kind of hang out here. That's fine. And when I get my free move, I'll go out here, check out that last run. I'm keeping the ambush in case I get attacked, because I don't actually have any ability to fight back. Okay, he's training more officers, which gives him more actions. And he just turned a soldier into an agitator. I keep watching everyone else's victory points. It can sometimes be a little slow to build up victory points when I've been playing, but it sort of depends. Destroying enemy buildings seems to be a good way to go. Oh yeah, and if you go in some place where they're agitating, you have to give a card to the Woodland Alliance. And that's what that outrage that popped up was. It also makes it easier for them to take over that space. So I'm showing you who's fighting, who's getting the hits. Attacker has a benefit in that they always get the highest die roll automatically. Except the Woodland Alliance, they always get the highest die roll. Okay, I can only pick three things. Pick our most important things in a boot. Okay, I'm going to move out here. Right, so... I've got sappers, so I could go ahead and make this card, and then I can keep it as something ready to go that I can use to get another hit in on the enemy when they attack me. Um, so there's also this you can kind of see up here. When I play as the Vagabond, when enemies play cards, or other factions play cards, they sometimes have things on it that, if I had it, I could play it and make the item directly. For them, it gives them a benefit, and then they have a hammer. If I give him something, he will automatically give me that hammer. If I give him something, he will automatically give me that boot. If he's got more than one thing, I get to pick which one I want. So that's another way that you can get specific things you might want or need. I've got two hammers right now, which is pretty good. Um, I don't even have anything that I can make necessarily, but I could actually check and see. But instead, I'm going to check out the last ruin. Okay, finally a sword. So I can actually fight in close combat. Well, combat. So I could go ahead, if I move, and make the Sapper's card. I could give the Sapper's card to somebody. So I could potentially give it to him, get another hammer. That would mean I could build up to any three-cost card that only requires one of the resources. But we're out of three victory points at this point, so now I've got to be looking more at quests. What do I need for quests? I really would like a coffee pot. I really would like another sword as well. So I might want to look initially at maybe drawing some cards. 
So next turn, maybe we'll go here. What's the other cost? Two swords and a mouse. Nobody's got any swords. I'll probably just stay put. There really isn't much reason for me to do anything. A third hammer doesn't help me too much. Another boot definitely doesn't help me much. I could move and go ahead and make the sappers just to help me fight off enemies. But I think I'm going to stay put so we can do the quest here, and then we'll look at maybe getting some cards and see what I can do from there. That's a pretty good one. Three victory points, and lets me draw more cards if I can make this myself. But I need to go to a bunny space. So I'm kind of in line right where I should be for victory points, if not ahead, honestly. It sort of depends on how early the enemy factions start getting into it with each other about whether I can kind of catch up or not. So the downside of the Woodland Alliance is they put those little mouse agitators, they can't defend themselves. They're sort of like a building with nobody defending them. So any faction can destroy them and get a victory point. But every time you do that, it kind of makes the Woodland creatures more angry and makes it easier for them to overthrow a space. But you're giving your opponents more victory points by placing them in places you can't defend. And now they're fighting each other, that's good. Although the Erie Dynasty is getting a bit ahead, which is a little dangerous. Okay. I'm in a fox space. It's not showing that I can complete that quest, but I can complete this. Then I'll probably go down here and build the bake sale myself. It'll take both my hammers to do it, though. So I'm going to stay put. And now if I'm not using my torch for a quest or for anything else, I can actually use my special ability, which is to go through the discard pile and pull out cards I want. And then with this character, I can actually make them myself. So I'm going to do the quest first. We're a pair of shed. Let's grab some cards this time instead of victory points. Okay, so we got an ambush and a mouse clearing. I don't have to pay anything for that. Favor of the rabbits, I can never use this. Well, I could. If I had three hammers, I could actually do that. And there is a way I could get a hammer. That would actually be kind of funny. Um, I'd have to do a lot of moving around this turn, though. So if I go here, give him something. He'll give me the hammer. Then either immediately or next turn, I could go down here play Favor of the Rabbits, and I remove all enemy buildings and warriors in every rabbit clearing on the board. That's kind of entertaining, honestly. Uh, that would get me, like, one, two, three, four, like four or five victory points. I think it's one per building. So that'd be four, I think, victory points. But playing this just gets me three and lets me draw more cards. So maybe I'll just do that initially. But I might want to go ahead and grab that from him. Even if I can't give him multiple things, I can give him something. Yeah, let's do that. Hey, I hear you've got something that I want. How about... Let's give you some sappers. I'll take your hammer. Thank you very much. Doesn't help me for victory points, because I've got to give him two in the same turn. At least I think it's got to be the same turn. Oh, actually, I have a quest here I can finish. Oh, I got a new quest for that. Okay. Um, it does use one of my bags, which means I'll lose some space, but I've got enough that it won't actually cause any problems. If you lose one of your bags and you don't have enough space, you'll have to actually get rid of items, which kind of sucks. 
I think I'd rather just go down here and uh, have a big sale. So now I'll be able to draw more cards. What I really need is a coffee pot or something so I can refresh more cards because I'm still stuck at only getting three. And if I want to use the favor of the rabbits, I've got to do just the hammers and nothing else. And hope he doesn't attack me or anything in the meantime. But I think I'm going to do that play. We'll see how it goes. Hey, another ambush. Scouting party. And he's kind of spreading agitators around. If I'm in a space where it suddenly gets taken over, where there's an, out, uh, an uprising, then I do take some damage if I'm sitting there. Yeah, he's trying to spread agitators like crazy. Without protecting them, really. Box for hire just lets you discard one of the uh, cards that's kind of not tied to a specific tile for an extra action on your turn. Okay, he's doing some attacks. He's actually doing okay, but they can't defend themselves. So he's getting a lot of extra victory points just for destroying those agitators. I'm hoping... Okay, that's not good. I'm hoping the Eerie Dynasty kind of falls apart here soon. They have to do certain things every turn, and if they don't, they lose some victory points, and their leader changes over, which gives them different kind of benefits, depending on who their leader is. But I think they're the hardest faction from what I've seen so far and played around with. Yeah, everyone's just stomping on the agitators for vic extra victory points. So I'm quickly falling behind. Okay, I want all three hammers, please. And I'll stay put. Okay, I probably shouldn't do this, because it's going to make... Let's see, Eerie will be mad at me. And the Marquis will be angry at me. Yeah, so both of those factions are going to be mad at me if I play this card, because it's like an attack on each of them. So they might go out of their way to try to screw me after that. But I think it's kind of fun. I don't think I've ever actually done this as one of the Vagabonds. So let's do it. The Vagabond and the Rabbits rise up and overthrow the occupiers. Extra victory points for me. Not a huge amount, but some. Oh, I'm going to make the Woodland Alliance mad at me too. I kind of missed that. Okay, everyone's going to hate me. Okay, and I have to give them a card because I attacked them. Um, I guess I've got to give them an ambush. Well, that kind of sucks. Everyone hates me now. So it's going to cost more if I want to move into a space controlled by one of the other factions. But I can just give them stuff, and they'll kind of be okay with me. So I can get them back to sort of not being hostile if I just give them something. Uh, I got myself a lot of victory points and maybe ruined the Eerie's plans. The problem with destroying buildings is that you don't take away victory points. So for, like, the Marquis, if I clear out more spaces, it means there's more spaces he can build stuff. So he just can build stuff again and get extra victory points. He doesn't lose victory points for the buildings that I destroyed. You get them when you build it, and that's it. That's all I can do on my turn. Oh, there's some coffee. And some victory points. They're paying a lot of costs to put agitators all over the place. OK, 
Okay, field hospital just means if he loses guys, he can get them back there, back at his base, if he pays some card costs. He's going after the agitators for free victory points. I'm hoping that they can't do what they need to do because I destroyed some spaces that they had. Yep, so they've entered turmoil. They couldn't do a specific thing that they were supposed to do. So they're going to lose some victory points temporarily. They'll change their leader, which will give them some different actions. So they now have their hawk guy as the leader. It looks like they're pretty much right around where they were before. It just kind of messes with their ability to do much. Okay, now... Let's do something like that. What kind of quests do I have? And nothing I can really do. Potentially I could do this. Mouse. If I want to make the root T, I want to be up here. Oh no, actually that's mouse. It always throws me off. It's a fox symbol at the top. But it's a mouse for the cost. So I want to go to a mouse space. This is maybe safer. Alright. What I'll do... Let me go ahead and make some root tea. So now at the start of my turn I can refresh five of my items. I can look through the discard pile for something that's a mouse card if I wanted. I can also give factions some stuff. Maybe I do that. Just so they're not as mad at me anymore. Uh, yeah, you can have that. Oh, he's still mad at me. I would have sworn when I was playing before against the Vagabond, he was attacking me and then giving me stuff, and it was kind of going back to the heart. So maybe I'm misunderstanding that, but I thought I could just give him something and it would be fine. All right, maybe not. Maybe I have permanently made everyone angry at me. I do get an extra victory point for killing stuff for any of the factions now. Maybe I have to give them a bunch to get it back? I'm not sure. But it seems like yeah, everyone's mad at me. Alright, fine. So I'm in a mouse square. So I could try to get a sword. I could hold that and maybe play that for some victory points and help me in fighting. Um, we could go for now removing everything from the mouse spaces. Crossbow lets me automatically kill somebody for free. I'm kind of tempted to go for Favor of the Mice, honestly. We already had Favor of the Rabbits. Um, the Sword is really tempting, too. Just because it'll let me fight a little bit more and get me some guaranteed victory points. This will get me victory points, too. Let's take that. Okay, so Mouse Spaces. That's like one, two, three... Or five. That's it, like at least five victory points. Okay, do I want to do anything else? I can't make anything. I can't move anywhere. I could attack somebody, but honestly, I'm not that great of a fighter. There's a lot of enemies here, which I'm not a huge fan of. If I stay put, I've got to use three for the hammers so we can make that favor. I can ambush a couple times here, so this is kind of safe. I don't have a quest here or anything, um, but I'm probably going to get more victory points from playing the favor of the mice. So I'm just going to stay put. <laughs> it's another ambush. All right. I've got too many cards. Um, I might play that. I'll get rid of the brutal tactics. Alright, so if they attack me, I've got like three ambushes I can play. 
Okay, he's taking over that space. The Woodland Alliance is on the move. I'm sure I'm going to get attacked here. Just depends on by who, how many times. That's a pretty big army up there. They come. Yeah, they can move sometimes weirdly because they have to do certain movements and actions. Yeah, so there he's got soldiers there, so he gets the higher die automatically. So much harder to kill those Woodland Alliance soldiers. So he's protecting his agitator there. Okay, we want all three of these. Uh, mouse, right? Yes. I'm going to stay put. I even have a quest I can do here. What does it cost? Um, I could do that. All right, go ahead and do it. <laughs> we had the favor of the bunnies, now we have the favor of the mice. Just massive uprisings led by the Vagabond against everybody. So that's a couple victory points, I think. This probably is going to get me there to win, I think. Yeah, we're getting some for the piles of wood that he had built up, too. So the first time I've really used the uh, favors of the different faction cards. Okay, I've got to give him something. Yeah, you can have a scouting party. That's fine. Oh, I'm one point short of winning. Well, it'd be a shame if I had a quest I could do. Some logistics help for a victory point. And just like that, the beavers triumph. So even though the Woodland Alliance is kind of like the alliance of under other woodland creatures, there's still sort of those cards that sort of imply that there's other factions and stuff. And the Vagabond is sort of like an independent hero. So the hero of the realm, united with the regular folk and farmers, rose up and just kicked the crap out of all the other factions. Woodland Alliance did not do very well. But yeah, that's actually worked really well. I hadn't actually used those cards before like that. But that turned out pretty well. Um, so that's kind of a look at Root and the Vagabond. So next time I might go with Woodland Alliance, because that's probably the next best faction that I, I'm at. Um, Marquita Cat isn't too complicated, but I don't do super well with them. And Eerie Dynasty is just really difficult to plan. But yeah, so this has been a look at Root. I've been Disturbing Puppet. Hopefully I'll see you all again another time. Have a good one.